Hey there! If you have lived through the era of Star Wars or Star Trek, then travelling through the galaxies into the vast nothingness of space did come across as an exciting idea at some point in your life. In the 21st century, we strive to make rapid advancements in technology, commerce and society altogether, and one of the most interesting phenomena of the past 60 to 70 years has been the exploration of space. Although the initial phases of space exploration and all the fundamental developments have largely already occurred in the 20th century, a lot is still left to do, so we now talk about colonizing and commercializing space rather than just exploring it. A lot of private ventures aim to achieve this. In this new generation corporate space race, we have Virgin Galactic that aims to democratize space tourism. Let's find out more in the video. Virgin Galactic, in case you do not already know, is a United States-based space exploration and technology company that primarily focuses on astronautics and developing spacecrafts. Of course, just just as we know with SpaceX, no average Joe can open up a space-related company. The amount of capital it takes to facilitate the development of such advanced technologies is something that even governments struggle with. Unsurprisingly, the founder of the company was already in a position of significant financial strength to not only pitch in the idea, but also to make initial launch capital readily available. Founded in 2004, the man behind Virgin Galactic is the United Kingdom's Sir Richard Branson. If you already know the name, then you you need no further background, otherwise the name Virgin Galactic should have given it off. Well, Sir Richard Branson is the same man who founded Virgin Group, the parent company behind the famous Virgin Atlantic Airlines. The aim was simple, to democratize space travel. Of course, everything is easier said than done. Hence, there was a dire need to have a dedicated spacecraft development company that would actually create the spacecraft to be used by Virgin Galactic. This was done to make sure that the overall business model was supplemented and there was vertical integration throughout the entire supply line. Hence, the Spaceship Company was founded in 2005. The Spaceship Company was jointly owned and founded though. Whilst Virgin Group made most of the investment and held 70% of the stakes, 30% of the stakes were held by Bert Rutan through scaled composites. This joint investment proved to be a very good move due to a number of reasons. For starters, it bulked up the initial investment for the spaceship company. Apart from the division of costs, it also created room for knowledge and information sharing between scaled composites, an American aerospace company, and Virgin Galactic. Now with its own dedicated spacecraft manufacturer secured, Virgin Galactic could focus on its goals. One thing in particular about Virgin Galactic is its new approach concerning vehicle takeoff. For quite some time, Virgin Galactic has been testing its unconventional approach to spacecraft takeoff. One of the benefits it had from its affiliation with Virgin Atlantic was the mixed approach it took when it came to its takeoff mechanism. The idea was simply to enable minimal takeoff costs on the spacecraft itself in order to make frequent launches more successful. For this, winged carrier aircraft were thought of as the ultimate solution. Another benefit for Virgin Galactic from its affiliation with Virgin Atlantic is the fact that it is experienced with commercialization and monetization. The whole idea for democratizing space surrounds the financial feasibility that will allow passengers to frequent space travel. Space tourism is the fundamental principle behind the tentative business model for Virgin Galactic, and with its already concrete understanding of tourism through information sharing with Virgin Atlantic, Virgin Galactic could have a substantial edge over its competitors when it comes to handling the crucial element of monetization. As bluntly as it can be stated, it might be right to say that the only substantial competitor is SpaceX. However, to Virgin Galactic's advantage, SpaceX does not have the market experience necessary to be able to effectively formulate a mechanism that might allow itself to make money. Virgin Group, on the other hand, has been doing it for ages, and its links with the tourism industry are deep-rooted. But when it comes to the actual experience, what does Virgin Galactic really offer? Let us head back to the flight pattern for that one. Whilst traditional spacecraft fundamentally lean on vertical takeoffs from the launch site, Virgin Galactic came up with the idea that would bring down costs, something that would make launch considerably cheaper. The takeoff consists of a total of five steps. First off, the spacecraft itself is attached to a large carrier aircraft that takes it to high altitudes. At the suitable height, near the sub-ionosphere, the spacecraft detaches and takes up an upward vertical vector at speeds of over Mach 3.5. After reaching a height of 70 miles, it is almost at a breach of the atmosphere, and its passengers feel weightlessness. Then the spacecraft re-enters the atmosphere. After doing so, it finally falls to a height of 9 miles, where it starts to glide for a safe landing. 
Whilst this might not sound like much, it is still the only offer out there. Of course, space tourism brings broader experiences to mind. However, no one in the market has been able to reach such technological integrity to make offers beyond this minuscule experience. Elon Musk might have dreamt about colonizing Mars, but right now, Virgin's Sir Richard Branson is relatively ahead as far as making money off the idea is concerned. This early step could mean so much more in terms of establishing Virgin Galactic in the market preemptively. Through breaking the ice for space tourism, Virgin Galactic did not allow technological restraint to stop it from making an initial offer to potential customers. This might just cement its position should a space market actually develop in the near future. So far, this popularity has been endorsed through bookings of its first commercial tourism flight. So far, the first flight was a test, with Sir Richard Branson himself being the company's first ever commercial passenger. But it is not only an internal affair. Virgin Galactic seems to be making leaps and bounds in terms of marketing itself well before time. The following flight is said to cost $200 $250,000 for a single ticket. Despite the steep price, which should already be understandable, 600 people from over 58 countries have booked a seat on the VSS Unity. This includes popular celebrities like Justin Bieber, Lady Gaga and Tom Hanks, all of whom are helping to shape Virgin Atlantic's marketing capabilities. However, being the first ever to offer commercial suborbital space flights has already established significant credibility for Virgin Galactic. Again though, other elements must be considered too beyond cost and capability. Social and environmental concerns also shape market behaviors. However, Virgin Galactic is not oblivious to that knowledge. Virgin Atlantic's stated goal of minimizing environmental consequences for its flights is also an important element that helps to shape its market. Moreover, its flexibility in purpose offers a variety of uses for its services. With the proposition of opening a space line, Virgin Galactic has raised many eyebrows. With the promise of making space-based Earth-to-Earth -Earth travel a dedicated service, Virgin Galactic might end up not only reshaping the space user market, but also the traditional transportation and communications markets on Earth. This brilliant idea will help the general population uncover the vast potential of space as a whole, from Earth orbiting hotels to scientific research facilities and even intra-Earth travel, it promises to take the world to the future. One more interesting factor that adds Virgin Galactic's mission of democratizing Earth is the scale of operations that it hopes to initiate. As stated in its goals, Virgin Galactic wishes to launch high frequencies of space flights in its early phase which will create a loop. This will allow Virgin Atlantic to employ economies of scale and also to conduct rapid research so that it can subsequently make continual improvements to its technologies as well as its overall business model. This will allow Virgin Galactic not only the ability to improve technologically but also to further popularize its services and democratize space as a whole. Well, that's it for Virgin Galactic and its plans for democratizing space. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click the like button and leave a comment about what you think. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more. Later!